Well, I'm just looking at this hat. Jeez, I'm good looking. What do you think, guys? Now, the reason why I'm wearing this is because I've changed the lighting up there, and if I take it off, <laughs> I've got <laughs> it's all shiny. I need some of that makeup that you have that uh, stops shininess on the head. But I love this hat. This is one of my favourite things. Uh, whenever I shoot, do weddings and stuff, this is the hat that I wear. So I might start wearing it a bit on here because it, uh, you know, I, I think it just makes me look hot. How are we all today? Um, good to see you all here. Now, let me start by opening up the bottle that I've been drinking. And I'm still, yeah, I did start early, David, a little bit early. because It's only on pre-show. Actually, let me bring that up. Uh, where are we? Let me go for theme or rundown, I should say, actually. Let me put on pre-show just so people know that it's pre-show time. Let me go back to social. So I'm going to start with this today. Focus, focus, come on, focus, focus. There we go, James Squire, 150 Lashes Pale Ale. Um, so I'm going to open this up. Let's have a look. Oh, yeah, here we go, here we go. Just promoting alcohol again. <laughs> oh, hang on, here, here we go. This is the ASMR beer soundtrack. You ready for this? You ready? James Squire, one. 50 lashes, nectar 
of the gods. You ready for this? Hang on, I'll, I'll do one more for you. You ready? <laughs> uh, I'm out of control already. This is bad. Oh, boy. Cheers, everyone. Uh, lovely um, Saturday morning here. It is, what time is it? It's 11.53. So we've got around about, what, eight minutes or so, seven minutes um, until we start the show. So I'm going to see who's here. So if you're here, just pop in the chat and say hi. So let's see. Oh, look, David Osler's here. <laughs> Van is saying hello from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. How are you, Van? David said, hi, David. Greetings from Boston. And I did start early today. Yep, I'm uh, usually a little bit late, aren't I? But today I'm starting a bit early. I'm going to have lunch after this. Uh, Kerry's on four weeks holiday now. So um, we're either going to drive each other crazy or we're going to have some fun. Van said, looking great. Thanks so much, Van. Um, Diego says, maybe we like the shiny head. <laughs> Oh, I love it. Uh, Herman said, greetings from Beak, Netherlands. Uh, how are you, Herman? John said, g'day, David. And yes, I like the hat. I know it's that old, this one, but it's so comfortable. I love it. Um, Chris said, hello, David. Nice day in Los Angeles. And you're going to get a Corona, Chris. Van said, is it local? The beer? Yes, it is. It's from... Where was it from again? Uh, I did see it. Uh, what did it say? It is a local beer, yeah. Uh, does it say on this side? Let me have a look, hang on. Focus. Uh, I did see it somewhere where it said where it was from. I've got it. I'll find it later. But yeah, it is. It's a local beer. So it's really nice. I really like the local beers, these sort of um, smaller breweries. Uh, it doesn't say where it is, but yeah, it is. It's a local beer. I'm not sure where it's produced, though. I'll have to find it. It's probably somewhere written in here somewhere. But yeah, it, it's a local one. I think it might be Victoria or local to Victoria or South Australia. I'm not sure. But anyway, it is local. It's nice, too, because it's nice and cold. Uh, Rocco said, greetings from southwest Florida. Uh, Tom said, hello, David, from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Um, Van said, cheer. Um, John, John said, you cracked me up. That's probably the um, ASMR. Um, George said, greetings from New York, Jersey. Another show, another brew. Cheers. Uh, Altrick said he's here as well. Um, Phil's here too, the Jaded Filmmaker. Like I said, if you haven't subscribed to him, another really good Aussie, so please give him a like. Um, Dan said, uh, hi from Florida, Lauderdale, Florida. Uh, Richard said, greetings from Las Vegas. And um, I think, well, I'm not sure what that is. <laughs> um, Muft, Mamuf uh, said, greetings from Brazil. Uh, so we've got a few coming in here. So, yeah, pop in and say hi. We've still got a few more minutes before we sh start. So another four minutes or so uh, before we get on to this. And then I'm going to have lunch. I love that. I love that little um, picture there, the cat in the water. <laughs> Looks like it's going to terrorize you if you look at that. I love it. How are you, Altric? too? Good to see you in here uh, again. Altric put a couple of great photos in their photography videography school. Um, we've got 9,000 people in that now. Uh, so that is unbelievable. I'll, I've got the link below if you haven't joined us. It's a, it's a, oh, thanks, Van, said nice shirt. Um, I've put a link down below to the photography videography school. So if you're not part of that group, please join us. Uh, we're over 9,000 people now. So it's just so, that's so good. And it's sort of an extension of uh, this YouTube channel. So, you know, please join us if you haven't joined us there. Um, Van said, yeah, great, uh, nice T-shirt. Thank you so much. Do you like this one? I am a guitarist, actually. Um, so I have to play guitar for you guys one day. Uh, per said, greetings from Norway. And Barry Street's also in here saying hello uh, as well. So how's your week been? Um, been pretty chill for me, actually, back here. Um, we're going to uh, spend a, a night. It's our anniversary, actually, on um, Monday. I think it's 43 years. Uh, Kerry and myself have been married. Um, so um, 
yeah, we're going to spend the night uh, somewhere in the city. So we're looking forward to that. Uh, it should be really nice and go out for dinner and stuff like that. So that should be really nice. The other thing too is we're probably more than likely going to be going to um, the UK. Um, and we may visit some other couple of little areas in Europe as well. Uh, probably, possibly the end of this year or early next year. Um, so that's probably what we're going to be doing. So I will be having some meetups and stuff like that with uh, people in the UK. So it'd be great to meet up with you. We can have some, we'll organise a shoot somewhere, hopefully. Gilbert's usually on the show and uh, I'm sure he'll be able to organise uh, some great things because he's always shooting some really nice models and stuff. So hopefully we can organise some of that. So we'll be definitely doing that. But I'll put more about that when the dates are truly confirmed um, but like I said, I think that's probably what's going to happen and we'll be coming over for probably four to six weeks, I think. So stay tuned for that. Uh, more information about that later on. Um, Van said, I would love to see you play guitar, please. Yep, I certainly will. I, I, sh I will do that one day, Van. Uh, congratulations. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's uh, 43 years. Uh, love Kerry to death. Uh, Scott said, hello, cheers. Um, jaded filmmaker says, wow, 44 years. Yep. I met Kerry when she was 15. We were very naughty because <laughs> Kerry got pregnant at 15. I had the baby at 15. So we've been together really since, uh, we were kids. Um, so yeah, it's uh, amazing. But the good part now is because we were so young when we got married, like my daughter and Kerry are, are like sisters, you know, it's incredible. Um, Long Rider said, I own a 62 Telecaster. Woohoo! In butterscotch blonde Osler. I love how you say Long Rider butterscotch blonde. <laughs> that's in, that's talking about my beard. I love it. That's a classic. Oh, I love the Telecaster. They were cool. I was always a Fender man, but yeah. Um, I don't have a Fender uh, electric anymore, but I have a Fender copy electric which I have fully um, sort of lowered the strings and put different pickups on and all that sort of stuff. Uh, but I do own a Fender acoustic guitar, which was a Japan one, which is unusual now. So there you go. Uh, how are we going? We're right. We're on time. So um, let's get started anyway. So I'm going to quit this because I want to try and make sure, you know, we're down for around about an hour tonight um, because I need lunch. But cheers anyway while I'm waiting. Mmm. Um, let me move over to this. So let's take off the rundown. Let's do the pre-show. I'm just going to put these on so I know where to start putting the um, stories on. So what we're going to go through is uh, some of the latest news today. Like I said, there's not heaps, but there's some interesting ones that we can look at. Um, so uh, we're going to look at the 16 to 35. There's an A9 story that we're going to look at. Also some sales uh, stuff as well. Uh, and a couple of other new stories too. So it'll be pretty good uh, going through this stuff. Um, so let me just take that off now because I don't need the latest news anymore. And let me come down to social. Now, if you do have any questions, um, fire them away because I will come back uh, to the questions as we go a little bit on. Uh, let me just bring the news stuff up though. Auto. All right, so let's look at this first because um, it's interesting to to show this. Like I said, I showed last week that I have the 16 to 35 F4 version. Um, and the main difference really between these two, and I'll talk about this as we go through this story, but the main difference between these two is that uh, this lens doesn't have stabilisation in. And I'm not sure why they took that out, but... It might now be because the bodies have 5.5 steps of IBIS in them anyway. And when that other one came out, um, I th oh, I can't remember. It's a fair while ago. Um, when the other lens came out, the 16 to 35 f4 that I've got, uh, the cameras in those days, the stabilisation wasn't very good because that was the a7 and the a7 II, um, I think. Um, so in those days the lens stabilisation gave you around about three stops of stabilisation. So it still would help. I mean, if you put a, a lens that's stabilised on a camera that's stabilised, they, they work in unison and you do get better stabilisation. So I do love using the 16 to 35 with the stabilisation and that's how I can get handheld footage because the stabilisation is so much better when you incorporate the in-camera IBIS with the lens stabilisation. So, you know, that that's an important thing. So... I think there's still an advantage to having that, 
But there's some big advantages to this lens in the fact of how small it is and how the lens itself is an internal uh, zoom lens, whereas the 16 to 35 is, is external, so it does come out when you zoom. Uh, so this is the size that it will stay. Oh, thank you so much, Long Rider. Just gave me a donation. It's got a guitar in it. <laughs> and the fingers all love it. Um, long Rider. Guitar, fingers up, and laugh out loud. Um, that's so cute. Thanks, buddy. Thanks so much. Um, I might be able to use some of that for the anniversary that Kerry uh, and myself go on on Monday when we go away. Um, so, yeah, it's so it's interesting to see this uh, Sony. So I thought I'd just go through a little bit about it. Now, it might be a lens that I will get later on. You know, I mean, I'm not sure, but it, it could be one's, one that I get in the future. Now, the main reason I say that is because I think this is probably one of the nicest um, video lens uh, that you could get for a gimbal. And that's where this would probably appeal to me. Because if you look at it, you know, that there's basically got the uh, de-clicked aperture ring. You've also got a programmable button on the side. You've also got the manual AF um, automatic focus uh, switch as well. So that's terrific. And the big thing if you've got video is that it's a power zoom. So if you use clear image zoom on this particularly, this really gives you a lot of range uh, just by zooming with that power zoom right the way through. So I can't remember what it takes it to, but it will probably go from 16 to 35. And with the power zoom, you probably get up to 50 mil or something. Oh, I can't remember the exact figures. Someone in the live chat may be able to um, tell me what that is. But yeah, it does give you a pretty good zoom range. And remember clear image zoom, if you're doing video, particularly, uh, I, I've never really found any loss in the quality uh, because all it's doing is just uh, using the part of the sensor so you get that full readout basically when you start to do it. So um, the clear image zoom seems to have no penalty and I don't understand why everyone doesn't use it because it's actually very, very good. So you're getting a big range out of this lens if you use clear image zoom. You know, you're probably getting 16 uh, up to say 50 mil or something. So I think that's great. And like I said, the aperture ring is in there. You can have it on full automatic if you want to, or you know, or using aperture mode, or you can set the aperture yourself using the ring. So I love that for videography. The other side to this too is that if you had it on a gimbal, you don't have to worry about balancing. Normally what I do is if I'm balancing a 16 to 35, like my F4 version on a gimbal, I'll put the lens halfway out. Therefore, it's sort of balanced between both ways when you when the lens goes in and also goes out. So I balance it with it halfway out. Well, you don't have to worry about it with this uh, because it's an internal zoom lens. So that balance is not gonna change. And that's a really big deal uh, with this. So I actually think for the price, this is a fantastic lens. Yes, there's distortion issues wide open. And look, what do you expect when you're paying $1,200? You're not expecting a G Master quality lens. But from what I've seen of this lens, it's lovely and sharp. Nice bokeh for an f4 lens, uh, and I'm often shooting a video, particularly 5.6, so uh, this is perfect for that. So it might be one day that I get this, but let's have a look at it anyway. So it's just saying that it's measuring in at about 3.5 inches, uh, and like I said, they've now done some voodoo-y stuff again with this. Uh, they've improved so much their lenses, uh, Sony, over the years. Uh, a couple of things, I'm not going to read it all out because I'll put this in the comment box down below, but um, it says the length increases to around 4.25 inches, 10.8 centimetres, um, with the uh, diameter close to the same focal length. It does have a sort of fat look to it, but if you look at it, and I'll, I'll show you against the previous version, I think it's fine. Um, I, and it says, I appreciate the size for handling uh, the focus and zoom rings. The lens weighs 12.5 ounces, so it's 353 uh, grams and according to Sony this makes it the lightest f4 wide angle zoom full frame lens available and like I said that's terrific that weight uh, is terrific to stick on a gimbal the housing is built from the same feeling plastic material that has been present on many G Master Sony lenses and the G Master Sony lenses are always very very good yes they're not G Master but they are actually very very good it says, however, Sony has been introducing the construction into G lenses lately too. They're talking about that, that, that plastic uh, material. Um, it says, with the A7R4 camera, I was pairing it. It feels a little heavier than the lens. Oh, the camera, I think, is saying. Uh, and the balancing point uh, for the kit is 
um, kid is right at the lens mount. Oh, okay, so you're saying the balancing is, is right at the lens mount. Let me just keep coming down. It said this would also make a good wide-angle lens for shooting off a motorised gimbal, and that's why I said, I haven't read this yet, um, that's why I'm saying it's fantastic for putting on a gimbal. Uh, you can see the lens here. Um, iris lock you've got there above it. Um, you've also got that declickable aperture that you've got there um, as well. Uh, you've got the telephoto lens that you can see here, so you can have that. Now, that works really well. I don't use it often, but it is nice if you want to get a smooth zoom rather than doing it by hand. I had the 18-105. to That's an APS-C lens, and that was really good as well. Um, but, you know, I think this is going to be a really nice lens in that regard. Um, you can see here where you've got your declickable aperture as well. So it's going from f4 to f22. The A there is if you want to use it on aperture mode, so it's automatic, in other words. Um, so, yeah, I mean, like I said, there's no stabilisation like there is on the 16 to 35. Uh, but, you know, that's that's really probably not an issue now with the latest cameras that are out. Uh, it just says, I'm um, just trying to check here. Um, on the right side of the lens is an iris lock to prevent jumping over to manual or automatic accidentally. Uh, so that's what that iris lock is there. Um, where was it? That was there, the iris lock that you're looking at there. So that's what that's for. So it's to stop it from moving, basically, which is a good idea. Um, where are we? Additionally, the aperture can be easily declicked by throwing the click toggle off on the lower right side. Uh, on the left side of the lens is a programmable lens button. I usually use those programmable lens button for IAF. I do like that aspect of just pushing that and getting IAF on it. But you can program it to whatever you want to. But that's what uh, I usually use them for. Let me know in the chat too what you use those programmable buttons for. I, I nearly always just use it for IAF. Um, you can see there what the programmable button there is, and also the AF uh, manual focus switch is next to that as well. That's a really nice thing to get because if I'm doing video particularly, well, even still sometimes if I'm uh, doing things where, uh, you know, like if I was shooting through a wire fence or sh I had, say, branches coming through uh, and it's focusing on the branches instead of the bride or whatever, I will immediately switch over to AF uh, from, oh, sorry, the uh, MF from the AF, and that's a terrific way of being able to switch it very, very quickly. So I love that being on lenses. The two favorite things for me is that AF, MF uh, manual switch and also the declickable aperture. They're the two things that I love uh, on the latest lenses. You can see here too that it's a 72 millimeter thread. Um, I wish it was a 67, but obviously you can't get them down to that size, but uh, because most of my filters are 67, but I do have some 72 millimeter threads. Um, but yeah, it's a 72 anyway. It just says at the outer end of the lens are the focus and zoom rings. Um, there, in testing, I learned that you can autofocus and zoom at the same time. Uh, however, when the shutter is released, the zoom locks down. Uh, here's some pictures too where they're showing it. Um, oh, they're saying there too. Um, so one thing you may find missing in the construction, especially if you viewed uh, as a follow-up to the aging Sony, that's what I've got, that um, F4 version, the um, Sony Varia Tessar, uh, is that there's no optical steady shot. Of course, most Sony cameras available now have in-camera stabilization to help out with this, but we are missing... Uh, but are we missing the advantage received by doubling up lens and camera stabilisation? Well, they're saying, I, I know that the lens was set around about 3.5 stops, I think, uh, of lens stabilisation with that previous lens. But look, it will help if you put that on with in-camera IBIS because they work together. But if you haven't got it, remember the IBIS now is pretty good in the camera. So you, you're probably OK with just the IBIS in the cameras uh, themselves. So here are some images. Uh, this, that one was shot at 35mm. Um, this one shot at 35mm. Uh, they're saying here that the image quality uh, inside the lens, uh, there's 13 elements in 12 groups, uh, including two advanced spherical elements and one spherical element. Um, let me just keep coming down. Um, if you're keeping track, this means nearly half the elements are some specialised nature to control its rendering, aberrations and distortion. Well, the distortion definitely, from what I've seen on YouTube reviews, needs to be fixed. But it will be fixed when they update 
say in the Lightroom catalog and, and Capture One, when those lens profiles come down, that um, lens distortion will be fixed because there was quite a curve uh, in it. Now, obviously video, you're not gonna be able to get around that, but you're usually not shooting stuff where it will really matter that much. Uh, photography may be a different uh, matter, but you can fix that in post um, later on. Uh, it just says here, for the most part, they seem to be doing a trick because I see minimal distortion at 35. There's more barrel distortion. And yeah, that's what I saw was a very, it was quite bad actually, the barrel distortion. But like I said, that will be fixed uh, later on. There's a little bit of purple fringing. Again, that will be fixed when lens profiles come out. Um, when it comes to backlit trees and similar high contrast areas, but it doesn't overpower the photos. Contrast and color. Uh, both have strong reproduction, and, and if you look at these, they look actually really quite nice. Um, I suppose if you looked in here, you could probably see some fringing, I don't know. Yeah, you can see a little bit there. I don't know whether that's going to come through um, in YouTube or not, but like I said, this will be all corrected at a later date. Uh, testing lens sharpness at 16mm, I found wide open at f4 to be quite good. By 6.3, it's achieved its peak brightness, and then f11 onwards, the image um, begins deteriorating. That's usually what happens anyway. Um, after you go sort of above that f11, you start to get diffraction and stuff like that. So, you know, it's, yeah, I mean, there's no way of getting around that, particularly at this sort of price range. But it is what it is, but I very rarely shoot above f11 anyway. Um, so it doesn't, that doesn't really matter to me at all. Um, looking at the corners at 60 millimeter, I, I saw F7.1 being the sharpest. Okay. Usually it tends to be around 5.6. So that's interesting. It's a little bit higher than what I would have liked. Um, that was shot at 16 as well. Um, the shot at 35, the color and rendering, if, if you look at these are really quite beautiful. Venetting at 16 millimeter is significant uh, until around 5.6 to 6.3. Again, this will be controlled later in the software. So I, I don't see venetting as an issue. I actually like venetting. In fact, if the lens is too clean, I usually put venetting in, but that's me. It, it depends really on what you want. Uh, I see venetting as quite a nice thing because it draws attention to the, you know, whatever I'm trying to photograph. Itchy nose this morning. Um, so yeah, it's, I don't see that as a problem. Uh, what's it talking about here? Old zoom, new range of tricks. It just says um, the lens offers solid optics inside a relatively compact and lightweight package. Um, as a bonus, it has some new tricks with multi-speed electronics power zoom. And this is great too because it's powered by XD linear motors. So this is going to be way better in focusing and things like that than the previous Sony lens. You know, I mean, that's quite old now. So having the linear focus motors in there would be fantastic. Uh, although they're talking there about the zoom motors, I think. Uh, the zoom can be controlled by lever, the ring, or even a Sony remote. And that is nice sometimes. You can control this through the Sony remote um, on your phone and things like that. So that's a really good thing as well. Uh, there's, what else is it saying? Um, photos are punchy and the lens is pleasantly sharp at the widest focal length. There's some softness to be found at 35 millimeter. Um, is it saying anything else? Are there alternatives? Well, of course there are. I mean, you can get the 16 to 35 f4, but that's quite an old lens. It's still, look, I hear a lot of people talking about this and they say that the lens, the 16 to 35 f4 is not a good lens. Well, mine is. And it, perhaps there's variations of that lens because my 16 to 35 f4 is, gives a really nice result and I'm really happy with it. And I've had it since it was basically released. And I've never really thought, wow, the lens isn't sharp or the lens isn't good. So... I'm really surprised at that. So if I hear people say that it's bad, perhaps people have a bad version of that. And I know the 35 1.4 had the same issue as well. Um, that had variations in quality as well. That's the original Sony 35 1.4. Um, I had a good version, the version that I had. So yeah, perhaps then there was variations. Um, it just says, uh, well, there you go, it's eight years old and there have been so many advancements in Sony's lens construction since 2014. Um, it also says here about the stabilization. There you go. Sony didn't have any cameras with in-body stabilization from what I found in old reviews. The lens was found to compensate shake for about three added stops. And that's, that's why if you're using the lens that I've got, you get about three stops. And why I love that is because 
it works so well with the APS-C cameras, but I tend to use, I haven't got it in here, have I? No, I tend to use a 10 to 18, and that's also got stabilization as well. So that's a great lens to use if you have an APS-C lens, because they haven't got stabilization internal. And it really, to get three point whatever stops of stabilization just through the lens is a really good thing. Um, so I think that's terrific. Um, so you don't get that though with the new lens, but like I said, you the like the A7 IV here uh, can compensate 5.5 stops of shake with sensor shift stabilization alone. Uh, so they're saying basically that you probably don't need it. I think they do work well together. It's a good thing to have, um, but there you go. And also with a wide angle lens, it tends to be much better for stabilization as well. The longer the lens, the more stabilization you need. If it's a, um, a wide lens, uh, it tends to you know not be such a problem. There is another alternative they're saying here too is the 17 to 28. I reviewed that. If you go back down, you'll be able to find my review of that. I loved it actually. And that's $900, so it's cheaper. Uh, it just depends on whether you want to have a, a 17 mil or a 16 mil, um, and it only goes to 28 instead of 35. So if that matters to you, if you've gone the Tamron lenses, it doesn't matter because the lenses will then go from 28 on. Uh, you'll get the 28 to 75. So it just depends really which lens you have. But if you do like to shoot at 16, obviously the Tamron's not going to be any good for you. So it just depends. But it is cheaper. Um, and it's also a very, very good lens uh, and really nice and small and light too. Um, like the PZ 16 to 35 f4, there's no optical stabilization. That's in the Tamron. Um, but I use that with uh, cameras with that. So as long as you up your shutter speed a little bit, there's no issue. Um, but the price is good and there's an added stop. Yeah, that's a 2.8. So that's another consideration as well. If, if f4 isn't enough for you, you could go for the Tamron and get a 2.8 lens. So that's, you know, that's another thing that you could think about as well. Um, let me just keep coming down here. Another one there shot at 16 mil. Should you buy it? Yes, the Sony PZ 16 to 35 F4 is a great addition to the wide angle zoom range of full frame E mount lenses. Now, I'll just show you one because I only wanted to read, uh, show you this. I wanted to show a comparison between the old 16 to 35. So they look like they're pretty similar in size when you look at them, but that's with the lens in. If you take the lens out, uh, there's a big difference. Um, so, you know, that's looking at them as they are there. Um, the 16 to 35 f4 is not a light lens, uh, but there's just some examples here if we wanted to look at them that we can check out. Uh, so that's against the um, G version, the new G version. Um, that's sort of showing it here on the A. I think that's the F3. Um, another one here, which is uh, showing on the A7. I'm not sure which one that is. Probably the A7 IV. Uh, it's a nice looking lens though. I mean, I think the size of it is really good. Um, so these are just all some images. Uh, let me keep scrolling down. You can see the buttons that you've got there. Again, you can see the power zoom that you've got there. Um, hand size, so that'll give you an idea about... It's, it is really quite small, I think. Uh, let me just quit out of that. So that's that one. Uh, let me go to this next one, because I just wanted to read this one thing that, like DP Review uh, said... They said that the PZ uh, 16 to 35 f4 is a, a useful, small, light, and optically impressive zoom with a list price of $1,200. It costs around the same level as Canon's EF and Nikon's F mount equivalent. So that's good. So at least they've priced this roughly around the same price that they've priced the Nikon and also the Canon equivalents of this lens, which is which is terrific, really. So you can't say that it's it's expensive. Um, Price back in 2014, 2010 relatively and below the launch prices of Panasonic's L-mount version of Sony's own 16 to 35. Um, the optical performance and lightweight convenience give this some appeal to photographers, whether as a wide angle zoom on a full frame or a 24-52 f6. Oh, well, there you go. So it goes up to 52 on a APS-C lens. Uh, but the more you look at the lens, how it's designed and the features it offers, the more it appeals as a do everything lens for videography. And this is where I think that this lens is going to be its most useful is for a videographer. Um, someone that's not wanting 2.8, that's you know ha or quite happy with f4, wants a small lens that doesn't have the power zoom, or, or wants a small lens that doesn't have the zoom that actually comes out, a barrel, 
there, in other words. It's internal zooming. So I think as a videography lens, this is really good. Um, or at least for those of us who aren't looking at a 5,500 cine uh, zoom lens. So I just thought I'd share that. So I think that's pretty interesting in itself. Uh, like I said, it would tempt me... Um, when weddings really start to pick up for me again, I might sell the F4 version uh, that I've got, the original one, and get this one, because uh, this would be great on a gimbal. So let's go to the next story. This is the A1 Teardown, and I wanted to share this because I thought, wow, this is so cool to look at how advanced uh, a Sony A1 is, particularly if you look inside at how much technology they've put into this body. Like, if people think, why are these things so expensive? You've only got to look at the components that actually go inside these. Like, it's it's pretty incredible. So let's keep coming down. Uh, you can see here that they've just taken the back off. And you can see there's no room in this camera at all. It is full with technology. And like I said, I'll leave this down below, guys, if you want to have a read of this later. Uh, I'm just going to sort of go through this and show you the bits and pieces that are in this. This is the main, obviously, motherboard uh, that's in it. Um, you can see the processor that's all here. And again, look at the stacking that we've got on here too of components. It's it's absolutely incredible when you look at it. And if you look here at everything that's pulled out of this, uh, it really is a complex piece of kit uh, that you're dealing with. I mean, it's, it's unbelievable, really. Uh, I just wanted to show this to you because I thought it's incredible when you start to see these pull down and no wonder you need to be specialized to repair anything like this because there's just no room at all um, to work with like when you look at it there uh, that is incredible I mean the biggest area you've got that's free there is the battery compartment you know apart from that everything is chock a block inside this thing like there's no room at all um, the technology that they can put inside these things is incredible. And when you think that this doesn't overheat as well, it, it's a pretty amazing feat uh, that they've done that in such a, you know, like a, a tight body like that. I mean, if you looked at it compared to the old digital SLRs, there'd be massive space in between. Um, even some of the Canons, you know, and the Nikons would have much more space than what this is because the Sonys are, are you know, are, are quite small. But anyway, I just wanted to show that to you because I thought that was interesting. Uh, this is the next story that we've got here. Um, DxO um, have put out a sensor um, for the A7 IV. Um, so, it, look, I often just take these with a grain of salt because they often don't mean anything if you deal with um, how the portrait looks, to be completely honest. But it's just interesting to see where they rate it. Um, and they've done the overall uh, score is 100, uh, is, sorry, is 97. The best is 102. Um they're also saying down here that it's 65, uh, what is it, the portrait colour depth is 25, the best was 65.5, so it's well up there. <laughs> Oops, excuse me, low light is 3379, uh, and that's 4505 um, is the highest that they had. And if you look here, comparing uh, the old cameras, the, the if you look there, uh, the red is, uh, or it might be orange, it's hard to tell on this. What is it? I think, yeah. The orange is the Sony a7 III. Uh, the red is Canon EOS R6. And the yellow is the Sony a7 IV. Um, you can see that they sort of go out and they vary in different positions, which is really quite interesting. Uh, if you look at the dynamic range there, the, the bottom part there is ISO. Um, the dynamic range is on the left-hand so, uh, side there. But you can see some in some cases the A7 III jumps ahead. Like, it's incredible how good the technology even now is still in the A7 III if you're just talking about pure photography um, performance. Uh, but you can see particularly there at really high ISO, the um, A7... What is it there? The A7 III actually is, is actually better uh, than all of the cameras that are there. So it's interesting, but uh, let me just come up and look here if they're saying anything. Um, just says, uh, too, that there's a useful increase in the overall picture count of 37.5%. Um, what else? Various improvements in stills and video features. The new A7 IV is an incredibly well-rounded hybrid. Now, just out of curiosity, let me just open this up. Uh, 
I'm just curious to see what the rankings are. Um, camera sensors. Let's have a look. Let me just go Sony. All right. So the top Sony camera, uh, I just can't show this fully because um, I have to move it across. I can't even move it. The top Sony camera here, and I'll just tell you what the ratings are. Um, the over, Well, you can see the overall score anyway is 100, and that's from the a7R three. So if you're dealing with, according to DxO, the best camera that's available at the moment is the a7R three, uh, and that is a 42.4 megapixel camera, uh, and its overall score is 100. Um, there may be ones that are above this because I think they said one was above that. We might look at that in a minute. But it's saying the next best camera is the a7R IV, uh, which is 99. And then you've got the Sony A1, which is 98. The Sony a7R II is 98. And the Sony a7 IV is 97. Uh, the a7 III is 96. So the a7 III is still a very, very relevant camera. If you look at that, the, it's, it's not much different if you're talking about pure... Um, photographic performance according to DxO um, testing uh, it's very very similar in fact uh, to the a7 III but according to them the best camera is the a7 R3 anyway I thought I'd share that can we get to let me check what the main one is it's probably it might be Canon or Nikon um, no, it's not Canon because their best one's 96. So the uh, Canon cameras are not rated as high as what the Sony was because we got up to 100 with the Sony. Uh, let's check Nikon and just see what that one is. I think I can select all of them, actually. No, well, there you go. So actually, it's the same. Um, the top score, overall score, is uh, Nikon D850 and also the A7R three. The first Canon is coming in way down the list. Uh, it's actually coming in under the Sony Cybershot. That's the R3. So that's interesting. Wow. So the top part of all of this chart is, is basically all Nikon and Sony. Yep. Wow. Just shows you, probably because they're using very similar sensors. I mean, in some cases, the Sonys are using the exact same sensor, aren't they? So, you know, that, that could be a, a point as well about this. So I just thought that was interesting anyway. Um, second last story here before we open up to a little bit of Q&A. Uh, this may be of interest to you, but it looks like prices are going to go up. Uh, this was from Japan, but they're saying that prices of cameras are going to go up on April April the 1st. So if you look at this, uh, they're saying that the cameras mentioned were the A6400, the A7C, the ZV-E10, and then you've got a whole range of cameras down here as well, RX cameras, etc. Um, it just says it is yet unclear if sooner or later the price increases will affect the other countries too. I think it probably will. Uh, I think with the way um, that we can't get components for these, uh, that I think you're going to find they're going to go up everywhere. I mean, if they're talking about recessions happening in the US and, and probably here and everywhere else through Europe with everything that's going on, uh, I probably would think that the prices of ca uh, cameras are going to be uh, going up, particularly with the, you know, the semiconductor shortage that's sort of around at the moment. Anyway, so be, they haven't said what it will be. Who knows? Uh, but obviously, April, it's going to be going up in uh, Japan uh, and remember, the problem is, too, the li uh, that if you're trying to get, say, something like an A7 IV, um, A1 is fine. You can get them because they're so expensive. But A7 IV, the A7S III, uh, cameras like that, you're on a, a pretty long waiting list. So if you're on a long waiting list, you're not going to get good prices. So, you know, that that's an interesting thing as well. So I think the longer that lasts, and now they're saying it's probably going to go into 2023, uh, the prices are going to stay up fairly high for quite some time at this stage, I think. Um, and the last one I thought I'd share is just this, because um, Samyang have been bringing out some really good lenses, and they've just announced the 35 1.4 version 2, and it's $800. Uh, and this probably is going to be a really good lens. Uh, they're saying uh, excellent image performance, even at maximum f1.4 f aperture with beautiful bokeh. Fast, precise, and quiet AF. They've improved their AF dramatically in uh, Samyang cameras compared to uh, previous years where they were really quite slow, particularly in video. Uh, they've improved them an awful lot. Uh, 
so this could be a really interesting one. You know, if you love that um, sort of 35 mil focal length, uh, this is another one that's there. It's very crowded, that space, though, at 35 now. Um, but anyway, it's another option if you wanted to save a little bit of money. Uh, $7.99 is a, a pretty good price, uh, which will probably be a really nice lens. The only issue with this, that there is a control there, but I think it's probably just for manual and automatic focus. It doesn't look like there's anything else uh, on it. There's no other images that I can see uh, through here. Not sure what that is. Might be... Oh, there is. There's a programmable button there as well. Okay, so you can. It does have a programmable button there on the side as well. So you have got a focus button as well. Um, so anyway, that looks like it's pretty good for the price. I can guarantee that will be a very, very <clears throat> nice lens. Uh, let me come back to me. Oh, nearly spilt the beer. And let's go to Q&A. Let me just put down here. Q&A. So if you have any questions, fire away, because I'll stay for a little bit and answer some questions if people have those. Um, if there's not many, well, it's going to be a nice and uh, early show. So um, we'll see what's there anyway. So let me just quit this Q&A thing, and then we'll check out what's happening <coughs> with the questions. Let me find where we're up to. Uh, where were we? Just... <clears throat> thanking Long Rider for the, <coughs> excuse me, donation there. <clears throat> now, Scott said, what are your thoughts on the mystery camera from Sony this year? Action camera. It could be an action camera. Um, they did say on Sony Alphas that there's going to be some sort of mystery camera um, this year. Look, I think that the, the cameras basically that are going to come out, I think this year are going to be an A93. I think that will probably definitely come out. And we're going to get a new A7R camera uh, that will be coming out this year, a real high-ended one that's sort of going to be like uh, the Mini A1, um, maybe not having 8K video, but it's it's sort of going to have that with a you know high megapixel. Who knows? It could be over 100 megapixels. Um, so I think they're the two cameras that's going to come out this year that I'm pretty sure about is the A93 and also the A7R. Um, the mystery camera could be anything. I'm hoping it's a really high-end APS-C. That flashed again then, I just noticed. Let me know if that flashed for you. Um, so um, I, th I would love to see a really high-end APS-C camera. So, you know, that would be terrific. Uh, but I, I don't know. It could be a new... Um, it could be a new action camera, something like that. It's going to be interesting to see what that will be. Um, Van said, um, still holding on to my A7R three. I love it. But attempts to... But attempts to upgrade to the A7 IV, what do you think? Well, yeah, I mean, look, there's still a lot more technology in the A7 IV. You'd notice a massive difference in focusing, Van. So if you can afford it, yes, I would. I mean, it's going to be much better in video. You've got 4K60, even though it's crop mode, but you've still got 4K60. Um, and also, you've got much, much better focusing and a much better color profile. Uh, the color has improved as this has gone on. So if you could, if you could afford it, yes, I would. Um, Nivac said the 16 to 35 G Master does have a, uh, doesn't have uh, no it doesn't have it that's right but my uh, original one does the F4 version does that's what I was saying Nivac. Um, Scott said I would sell my Tamron 28670 for this one if I still had the A7C it would be a must have to keep the package small yep yep fully agree Scott It'd be great package with that that's for sure guy with the camera good day buddy uh, it says seems like i'm the only one interested in this lens love the concept no i'm i am too i, I actually think it's a, would be a great lens particularly for me shooting video uh, i think it would be fantastic actually um the gentleman said uh the a74 plus 16 to 35 f4 combo i think that's a great combo uh, i really do um the MFT is a little behind version 1. Looks like a minor upgrade. Yeah, it's not much. It's not much of an upgrade at all. Um, <clears throat> but if you look at it from the aspect of having the internal um, zoom ring, you know, it's inside. It's not a barrel. If you look at the fact that you've got your aperture ring, if you look at the fact you've got your programmable buttons, um, things like that, I, I think it's a, a really nice upgrade. Um, A9, yes, that will be coming out sometime this year, Mark. 
Uh, so we'll definitely get an A93, I think, sometime this year. Um, what's the news about the A9? Well, we're still waiting, Altric. I think it's going to be late this year. Um, George said, nothing cures uh, gas faster than inflated prices and short supply. That's exactly right. Exactly, George. You're dead right there. Um, Polar N said, yes, I saw the stream flash too. Yeah, I don't know why it's doing that. I was going through the Yolo box uh, before. Now I've gone directly into the ATM. Um, and I thought that would solve it because it's taken out a whole stack of stuff and it still did it. I don't know. Could be just YouTube glitches. Who knows um, what is causing that? Now, if you haven't checked out my videos, I have put a couple of videos on in the, in the last couple of days. Uh, I stuck a video up talking about um, a great Thunderbolt drive that I've attached to my system. So you could check that out if you haven't looked at that. And I also did an update on the Yellow Box too, what features have been added to that. I've got in the coming days too, I've got an upgrade. Uh, it's an accessory for the GoPro, so stay tuned for that. And I'm also going to be reviewing this too, um, which is the Viltrox. Focus. Uh, it's the Viltrox and it's the 35 1.8. Um, I got sent this lens uh, and I used it in a wedding uh, the other week. So I took some photos with it. I did also take photos with the other lenses just in case. I mean, you just don't know. So I didn't want to uh, do a wedding and, you know, have the images no good. So I was sure that I used them for other things as well. Um, but I'm going to review that this week and show you the results. It's pretty good. Um, so I'll talk about that when I do the review. So stay tuned for that uh, as well. Um, Mark said, have you done anything with a 14mm Sony? No, Mark, I'd love Sony to send me that, um, but I, no, I haven't used it yet. But that, I, everything I've seen about that lens, it would be amazing. Uh, it looks like it's a fantastic lens. Uh, again, um, it'd be one I'd love to have in my wedding kit that I could, you know, just use for really wide angle stuff. And I love Prime, so uh, that really would interest me to have a review unit of that one. So yeah, unfortunately, uh, I haven't had it sent to me. So yeah, well, that's about it, guys. So it's been a nice and quick show today. Um, apart from that, I'll, like I said, I'm back to doing these live now, even if it's just for a Q&A, uh, if there's no news on, uh, I'll pop back on for, uh, you know, to do a live with all of you. Um, I'm just wait for a minute just to see if there's any more questions before I uh, tune off today. Just trying to see over there. Um, no, people are just saying thank you. So it looks like it's basically the end of the show. So it's lunch for me. Um, I'm going to go and finish off my beer and have something for lunch uh, with Kerry in the house. So let me just switch over to here. And let me switch to that. Let me go here for a second. And basically, I'm going to see you in the next video. So catch you later, guys. Uh, let me just quit this out and play this. See you in the next show, everyone.